Welcome back to the High Voltage Light Electric Vehicle channel. Before we get started with today's video, uh, a quick bit of information for next week. Lots of you are probably aware that CYC are heading into the third generation of their X1 motor and I've been asked by quite a few people to take a look at it. So I sent off a huge list of questions to CYC and I'm going to be going over the answers that I get back to those in next week's video. On to today's topic though and there are a lot of videos on this channel that provide tips and tricks um, on how myself and others have built DIY e-bikes. This video, however, is to promote a really fantastic guide that was put together by Matt Robertson, who is the author of the Tales on Two Wheels blog. If you're new to building e-bikes or even just considering doing a DIY e-bike, then this is like a really excellent resource that covers pretty much everything that you need to know and do. The example in this guide is using a BBS HD, but really the process applies to any e-bike that you might like to build. I really wish um, in many ways that this had been available when I first set out on building my own electric bikes because I spent a long time gathering together different bits of information and watching a lot of different videos and researching things on Endless Sphere and the various other forums. But this guide has just about everything you need to know in one place. Beyond the guide itself, there are lots of other resources that you can find on the Tales and Two Wheels blog, and it's definitely well worth checking out. So the guide itself is split into six sections, and there's a very clear method and flow to it. The first stage is, or the first step is planning. And essentially it's taking you through the process of finding exactly what kind of bike you want to build and what you're gonna be using it for. And the aim is that you build a bike that's gonna be fit for purpose and also within the kind of budget that you might have and can afford. In my case, I wanted a bike that could pull both of my kids in a trailer to and from school. Um, I also wanted to be very strong and able to go on a range of different terrain types. Um, Matt wanted something that he could fit essentially in the back of his station wagon. Um, if you're in the UK, that means in the state car. Um, the key though to this section is the creation of a build sheet. And there is even uh, an example on there of a build sheet that you can download and customize and make work for your own project. And it essentially lets you spec out the bike and choose components and make sure that it fits your budget for the bike that you want to build. Step two is called hunting. And essentially this is talking you through the process of picking the frame. And it makes a very valid point to hold off buying almost all of your components until you actually have the frame in your hands. And I kind of didn't really do this and I ended up buying bits and bobs that I didn't actually need and didn't work because I made certain assumptions before I'd actually got it in my hands. So it took Matt three weeks to get hold of this amazing looking frame. And not only is it gonna put a BBS HD in a really good position, but it also has room for a battery and it's full suspension. So it's pretty much the holy grail of bike frames right there. Stage three is entitled tinkering. And this step is once you have the frame, you can start to evaluate what kind of parts you'll need. And you can avoid making the sort of mistakes like ordering a battery that doesn't fit the frame or the wrong axle width. Once you have the frame, you can essentially reevaluate the parts list that you sort of semi-crafted in the first stage. And there's lots of good information in this section on getting your chain line right and buying parts to ensure that this works well. Stage four is the actual buying of the bits. And you've got this parts list that you roughed out to start with and you've refined this once your frame got there. So you've got all the parts that you need to get and the sheet really kind of comes into its own then because you know everything you're gonna buy. You can make lots of notes about where you're gonna source it from. You can put tracking details on, you can mark off whether it's been received. It's very easy to keep track of everything. And when I did my bike, I kind of, 
everything was on little bits of paper and emails and I you know it, it's just so much easier to organize it if you have it out on a spreadsheet like this. Step five is the actual building of the bike and this is split into three sections because it took Matt three days essentially to put the bike together and there's a ton of good advice on what tools you might need where you can get tools from lots of techniques uh, lots of video clips uh, including some from me <laughs> um, everyone's build will be different um, but a lot of the core tasks are the same and this goes through it in a very sensible way jobs you should probably do first and jobs you should probably do later and uh, it indicates what tools you'll need and whether you might need to maybe learn some extra skills before you do this or get some help or maybe borrow some things. So the last step, number six, looks at fine tuning the new ride. And I remember changing quite a few things on mine, mainly to do with the chain line and things like that. Um, in general, the more time you've spent on the initial planning stages, the less that you will have to do with this. But pretty much every bike needs a little bit of tuning, whether it's you know something as simple as getting the stem sorted or the riding position or maybe switching out the cassette at the back, some, something like that. I mean, once you've ridden it around for a bit, you, you're going to figure this out. Um, so that's the guide. And I think even if you're already an experienced builder, I think there are some tips and tricks that can be gleaned from this. It really lays out the whole process in a very logical and well thought out manner. The best part is it's free of charge. Although if you get good use of it and you want to buy Matt a coffee or a beer or something, then go for it because uh, he's put a huge amount of time into putting it all together. And if you're new to e-bikes, this will really help you with the process itself. Or if you're kind of sitting on the fence as to, you know, do I really want to do this? You know, can I do this? Then it's going to help you see all the different stages of what might be involved. Um, if people do use this guide, uh, I thought it would be really cool if people could share their build sheets. Um, so essentially, at the end of your build, share the spreadsheet, and then we could even have like a, kind of a library of, of different builds. So you know, if, if people found that same frame, they could see what somebody else has done, and they'll have almost like a parts list that's already specked out and ready for them to use. Uh, if you have any suggestions with this guide, you can contact Matt directly via his email on the blog, um, or you could also do it on Discord, and there is actually a chat room entitled Tales on Two Wheels, and you could talk to Matt on there too. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching the video, and I'll see you next week, and we're going to take a look at the CYC Gen 3 motor. Cheers.